Hello, good morning, happy Thanksgiving Eve to everyone. I'm Louise Weiss, standing in for Denny Grimes and John McLeod. They are otherwise engaged and they will return, um, if not Friday, they'll return on Monday. Uh, so Denny usually starts the show with something that happened on this day in history or something um, that today is celebrated for. And today is known as National Craft Jerky Day. I'm sure there are a lot of people creating jerky out of a variety of items. And today we don't just randomly create things. We are very calculated and planned and intentional with what we do. And that's why we are here practicing every day. So we'll start right now with, I see in my screen, I see Janet Bloodworth and I see Dr. Lauren. Oh, here, Nyquan has raised his hand. And Dr. Lauren Nyquan. Well, let's see, I think we are on the phone today. Good morning. Is today a phone day, Sunday, or a table day? Tuesday table, yeah? Or is it phone uh, day? Wednesday at the table. Okay, so oh, Nyquan Tuesday, is at the table with Dr. Lauren. And Nyquan, what is the scenario? Uh, let's see. I'm at, I'm at the table. Uh, this would be my I probably my first time being at the table, so I don't really know the scenario. Right, the scenario what I normally is practicing on is like cellar leads. So okay. This is a, mm -hmm. So so you've practiced so well with your cellar leads, Nyquan, that you have actually scheduled an appointment and you're at the table with cellar Dr. Lauren. Oh, and yeah. Matt has joined us. Hi, Matt. Hey, Matt. Good morning. Happy happy holidays. Good morning. Let's get to it. You're at the table. All right. Louise, can you hear me? You can hear me, right, yes, Louise? I, am. I can hear okay. you. Okay. okay. All right. So we're at the table. So, um, Dr. Lauren, so wait, now that I should, now that, that we're here, so would you like to move forward going on um that going on as far as uh working with me as a real estate agent? No, I'm not I'm not ready yet. I think I'm gonna um take some time to think about it till after the after the holidays. Take some time to think about it. absolutely. Do you, um what's the reason why uh, do you mind me asking um the reason why? Um I don't mind you asking, no. Um the reason is because I want to put the market on as soon as the holidays are over so that I'm the first person out there to start off right. the spring market. That's awesome. That sounds amazing. How about this? How how does this sound? Can how about I pencil pencil you in, um, right after the holidays? Maybe let's say two days after after Thanksgiving, Black Friday. Let's say follow up on Tuesday to talk about it. Um. Well, I'm not sure because we might be still traveling. Um, and then you know Christmas is going to be there, so we're not really sure when would be a good time for us to talk again. Okay. Uh, my next question. Let's worry. Don't worry. So, uh, my next question to you is how important to you as far as getting this house sold? Very. It's very important. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I just just hear hear me out on this. I actually think we should actually move a little bit faster than that. Like, I know you want to wait until after the holidays, and we can. But I think it's a as far as a good judgment to like once the holidays over, get back in get back into the saddle. Um, to see what what our options are. You don't want to have your uh, house on the market for more than a certain amount. It actually starts to lose uh, a certain appreciation to it as far as value. Um. Okay. So since I don't want it on the market that long, I'd rather get it on January first as opposed to December first because people are going to be out Christmas shopping, and I doubt they're going to be looking for homes. Okay. So let's we could so let's reconnect on um, on January first then. Sure. If you want to reach back out January 1st, then great. Yeah, absolutely. I'm done. Okay. I know Mac, that was rough. Have... Mac, rip me apart, please. <laughs> uh, we're not going to rip you apart. We're going to help you grow. And you did some great yes. things. Um, Matt, Thank you. would you like to share? I like the fact that you just stuck with it, uh, number one, because mo most people would have froze up and just bailed. Um, and you role played with one of the most uh, fierce individuals in this role play. So there's that. And she's freezing her butt off this morning. Um, see. <laughs> so, the, but but re the reality is she gave you some layups and you could have ran with it, but that's okay. 
So okay. she, she said she said she wants to be one of the first people on the market, essentially, and in some capacity. She wants to be the first two. And I said, okay. well, oh, gotcha. When when would you like the home sold? I would ask something about that. When would you like it sold? Ideally, right. in a perfect situation. She doesn't want to be on the market for a great amount of time or a significant amount of time. So Correct. she wants to wait till after the holidays. And I, I just asked, and, and you started telling them, we need to move faster. So you want to ask a question. Hey, right. you know, I'd say, hey, Do Dr. Lauren, if, if you found out that there were a significant advantage to actually being on the market over the holidays, mm -hmm. would you have any interest in pursuing that? That sounds I mean, amazing. And it, yeah, an advantage? Uh, sure. Yeah, and, and, and great. And, and, and then I would go in and explain how, what I, I always ask, what do most homeowners do over the holidays? Yeah. And they get they get confused, and they, and then I say, well, can I help you? They, say, they do the same thing you're talking about doing, keeping their home off the market. So if there's less people on the market, what does that mean for us? Right. And, well, and of course, I, I, I back them into it. And then, yeah. and then I'll say, right, and, and, and while there may be a little less traffic over the holidays, what type of buyers do you think are looking at us over the holidays? And, 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 there you go. Yeah. They're not gluttons for punishment, nice one. Mm -hmm. They need a house. That's why they're looking. Right. right. So if, if, if you if if you felt confident that you may get less activity, but the buyers that were looking at it were ready to make a buying decision, would there be any reason you wouldn't want to be on the market? Right. And that's it. Freaking gold. I'm gonna be using that by the way today. <laughs> oh, oh, Self-discovery is a very good thing. And the only thing I would add is I would, I'd like to reference our model, our objection handling model. Yes. Where we want to acknowledge to isolate and clarify three address and four clues. And uh, Nyquani did a great job of acknowledging it. Um, we don't, we didn't, I didn't hear an isolation. So we don't, that would sound something like this. Dr. Lauren, other than that, is there any other reason you wouldn't move forward? And that would reveal any other objections that she would have. Right. Okay, <clears throat> so well done, great job. Uh, Dr. Lauren, you're at the table with Saul. No, with, so yeah, Saul. And what is your scenario? So I have an interesting scenario. Let's say this is a seller that I cold called. I'm actually trying to get into an, a neighborhood for one of my clients. They were interested in, in selling and so I'm kind of just seeing how, how interested they actually are, essentially. Does that, does that make sense? How, so how, what, how what they are, Dr. Lauren? Hang on, hang on one second, hang on how one second. How interested they actually are. <laughs> oh. Things okay, here we go. Yeah, there you go, yeah, so, there you go. You, are you, yeah, so um, it's, I'm calling in an area for a buyer. Uh, someone picks up the phone. They're like, yeah, sure. Maybe I'll be interested in selling. Come on over and let's talk about it. That's essentially what the scenario is. Okay. Ah, okay. I like it. Cool. And this is Saul? Yes, yes ma'am. Awesome. Wonderful. All right, Saul, now that we've gone over everything and I've, you know, I've mentioned to you the buyers that I have that are interested and we've talked about some of the benefits that you could get out of selling your home. Are you willing to move forward with me today? Well, Dr. Lauren, I am not quite sure if moving forward is going to be a good time for me right now. Okay, tell me a little bit more about that. Well, you know, the holidays are coming. I think people are going to be more focused on traveling and getting distracted with that. So I am a little bit nervous. I am willing and open to the possibility of selling, but I am a little bit nervous about that. Okay, so other than being a little bit nervous about it, is there any other reason why you wouldn't move forward with, with uh, me today? Um, for the moment, no. I think another question might arise later, but for the moment, that's the one that I have. Okay, well, um, listen, I certainly can appreciate that. Well, one of the things that we talked about today is that I actually have a buyer that is ready, willing, and able to give you an offer on your property and get you moved. So. We don't have to necessarily worry about people looking or being slow because you already have someone that's ready to buy your house. So what's uh, what's keeping you what's keeping you here? Mm. Well, honestly, it's, 
as I mentioned, precisely because of the holidays, I want to have a kind of slow season and because a lot of people are going to be in the same situation like me. And talking about that buyer you mentioned, how qualified the buyer is? Uh, well, we have already had under we've already have an underwritten offer, so we've already gone through that process. Um, we're cleared their we've cleared their funds. They're ready to close in thirty days or less if that timeline works for you, or we can be more flexible. So, what would be better for you? Well, honestly, what do you think if you bring the buyer to see the house, and if uh, the buyer likes it, we can move forward? I think that's a great idea. My buyer's going to be available this Saturday at twelve. Um, would it be all right for us to come by then? Can you do it at 11 a.m. better? We can certainly do it at 11 a.m. Absolutely. Perfect. So uh, let's just do All that. Right, so we'll... See how that comes. Oh, fantastic. So I'll I'll go ahead and um, put pencil you in for Saturday at 11 a.m. We'll bring the buyers by. We'll have a conversation. And if everything sounds good, then um, we'll put an offer in and we'll see. We'll go from there. Yeah, perfect. That sounds good to me. Thanks, Al. Appreciate it. Talk to you on Saturday. Yeah. Great welcome. isolation. I, I would ask if maybe you can help him with the next place. You did a wonderful mm -hmm. job, though, of isolating um, and, and getting him on the fence. Matt, what do you have for us? Um, I would have just thought some clarity around, like, the why and, and the significance of the time frame. So, you know, he, it sounded like the, a similar objection to what, what Dr. Warren had when she was the, the seller which is I want to wait until after the holidays, buyers aren't really, so if, if, if it's the same objection, I'm not going to handle it any different unless mm -hmm. their situation as to why they're selling warrants. Um, so that's, I would just, I, I would probe more into help me understand what's important to you about waiting until after the holidays, other than the fact that maybe, maybe there's going to be less traffic. So that, that's all. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> Moving on. Seoul is at the table with your Florida realtor to refer. I don't know who this is. Because <laughs> we have a lot of Florida realtors. Sure. We can refer to Matt. We can refer to yeah. Louise. <laughs> I am here in Pensacola, so... <laughs> What is your name? You're talking to me? Yes. Garrett. Garrett, I haven't ever seen your handle different than Garrett. It has. I know. Different. I switched okay. it up for, for obvious All right. reasons. All right, what are we doing? So okay, I am going after a listing consultation and see if we can get signed a listing agreement. Okay, so you're at the table. You're at the table. You're the listing agent. Garrett is the seller, and you're just trying to get the commitment. And any specific objections that you want him to use? Uh, the main one has been just the time frame that a lot of time people frame. they they are wanting to go ahead on time, and they say, okay, we're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna be listing, but not this year. Okay, all right, let's roll. Perfect. What is the name again? Uh, Garrett. Garrett. So, uh, you know what? I Garrett. just want to for I I want to wait until next year. Um we are going to go with the realtor, uh, but we're just going to wait until next year before we make that decision. Uh fully. Okay, I understand that. Um other than that, Garrett, do you have any other concern or something that is stopping you to move forward right now? No, really. We're just not ready yet. Okay, and can you tell me again the reason why you're considering selling? Um, well, we want to uh, downsize to something a little bit more affordable. Okay, I understand that. So, and you're planning to stay in the area, right? Uh, we're flexible. Okay, okay, well, that sounds good. So, in obviously the time frame, but when it specifically needs to happen? Well, what do you mean? I mean, you told me that it's going to be three months, but specifically, what is the time, the, the month or the day that you would like to move forward? Um, flexible, you know, 
I just okay. I want to get a certain price out of my house and obviously we got to find another house. Okay, can you help me to understand that? How flexible you are and why are you taking so much and uh, not so much time, I'm sorry. Uh, why are you so, taking that so, time to think about it? So I work remote, so I can really uh, go anywhere. Um, our goal is just to get something a little bit so smaller, a little bit more affordable. So we're just kind of waiting out the market and just kind of seeing what the market will do. Because um, right now we know that the market is slow and mm -hmm. uh, uh, we're just, we're just kind of waiting it out and just kind of seeing, uh, um, you know, uh, what's going to happen in the next couple of months. Yeah, no, I completely understand that. So, and the reason why I'm asking you this is because also I have a couple buyers that they have been interested in this type of, in this neighborhood specifically, and, oh, time. Time. <clears throat> did you ask him if he needs to sell in order to buy? No, I did not. Yep. So that, that'd be the first piece. And I hope, I hope that he would say that he doesn't, because it, when they say that they don't, all all the logic that they're using is out the window okay. because we keep in mind what what, what he what he, he he poked holes in his own balloon because mm -hmm. he said the market is slow right now well if he doesn't need to sell in order to buy do you think it would benefit you to be a buyer in a slower market right so but if he has if he has to sell in order to buy again his logic works against him because the distance between what you want and what you have is always the same. Yeah. Unless, unless you're moving into a completely different market, unless you're moving from here to Dr. Lauren's market, or you're moving from here to New York or uh, uh, North Carolina. So the distance between what you want and what you have is always the same. So what happens if the value of your home goes down, Garrett? What you're going to buy goes down. Yeah. So why are we, other than downsizing, why are we moving? Okay, and what and what's the what happens next year if the market's not any better or conducive for what you're hoping to happen? Is keeping this home an option? Perfect. Well, thank you for that. Absolutely. Okay, Garrett is at the table with where did Carlos go? Oh, he was driving. So we'll move on to. We need a hand. Um, I there's Carlos. Him. Carlos is back. Carlos. It's cold over there. Garrett is at the table with Carlos. Awesome. So, uh, what are we doing? Well, um, surprise me. Uh, we'll just do a listing appointment. So, Carlos, you know, after we explained everything, are we ready to move forward? You know, Garrett, um, I have a question. How's the uh, commission structure works? So great question. So, you know, with the, the commission, you know, my co-broker or my my listing is X. However, we can determine who the how much the co-broker is. What would would you have in mind or what's comfortable to you? I was hoping I could save some money because my home is um, over a million dollars and that that seems like a lot of money. Yeah. What's important to you about saving money? Well, I wanted to save. I want to be able to afford my next home. Okay. So we want, So the goal is really to net the most amount of money, correct? Yes. Okay. And, and, and remind me again, the reason why we're selling this property is to um, get something else. What does that other home offer you that this home doesn't? Uh, we need a lot of space. I've got two kids. Okay. So we need more space. Anything else? Um, close to school, possibly, for the kids. Okay. Okay. So, you know, we want to get the, the most amount of money out of the uh, home. So if I told you, you know, if I showed you a way how hiring me, you know, could get you or net you more money than saving as far as on the commission, would you do it? I would. I also saw like some signs that are one percent realty. Um, I don't know. Are you gonna match that? Well, that's a great question. Would you like me to match their services as well, or would you like me to get you the most amount of money out of the property? 
Uh, how are you going to do things different than there? Well, Carlos, let me ask you something. Did you ever buy a product that uh, was discounted um, and uh, you were just unsatisfied with the, uh, uh, the quality of the product? Yeah, possibly it happened in the past. Would you agree that you get what you pay for? Not all the time. But most of the time? Sure. Okay. And what, what uh, I've went through so far, do you feel confident I can get your home sold? I like what you said so far. Yes, Garrett. Okay. Fantastic. So are we ready to move forward? Uh, you know what? Can we do it like in a couple of weeks? Because I need to get the home ready. We're not ready yet. Sure. And no we're problem. at time. We're at time. <clears throat> okay, Matt. I welcome your thoughts. We all welcome your thoughts. You never really addressed the objection in a systematic way. You, you kind of dance from here to there to everywhere. You know, you start talking about, well, the net, the net or the commission. Then you talk about why are you selling, where are you going? And I know you're trying to figure out motivation. But based off what I heard from Carlos, it was just a commission question. It, it didn't necessitate everything else. It, it, so it, you know, Carlos saying, well, you know, how, what's your commission structure? Hey, Carlos, great question. Uh, and then you kind of stumbled it. This is what I, what I like to convey to people or the agents in this call. Do not be ashamed of what you charge for your services. It's not an unorthodox question either. So if you walked into an, a doctor's office and he says, hey, you've got stage four brain cancer. He's not going to be like, well, uh, you know, it's uh, no, he's confident because he's a professional. Carlos, I have a flexible fee. If I find the buyer for your property, it's one. If if another agent finds the buyer for your property, it's two. What other questions can I answer for you before we get started? There wasn't really an objection beyond that from Carlos. Now, if there was, and he's like, well, what about the 1% guy? Okay, let's talk about that. You, you said, Garrett, you started to address, well, would you, you know, you get what you pay for. Have you ever bought something? No, 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 no. Carlos, what do you get for that 1%? Okay, and then, and then, we're, would, and so you're, you're pulling out of him. Because then what you said, what you're, you're implying that you're going to do more than the 1%. You don't even know what they're going to do. So what do you get for that? And, and how certain are you that by going with the 1% brokerage, you're going to have, number one, you're even going to get to the closing table. Or number two, you're actually going to put more money in your pocket. Because what I heard you say, that's most important to you. Did I miss something? So do you see what I'm saying, Garrett? It's, you, you're, you, you, don't, you don't have to juggle 16 balls to handle the one objection. Focus on what he's talking about. That's all. And Garrett had a sentence in there that I thought was really very good. And I, don't, I didn't write it down. But as soon as he said it, I, I thought, well, so I, I should rewatch this to hear it. Um, and... Uh, I like that. I'll have to remember it. Okay, let's move I, on. I, 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 yeah, it, was, it had to do something with the 1%. It, I remember because I saw your eyes light up when you said it, but it was somewhere in the 1%. Um, but it's it, like, like, like I was saying, it, um, it was, it was more, it, he said something more along the lines of what, what that person was going to do or, you know, what he was going to do for them that they wouldn't. Be careful oh, when you do that. Go ahead. You want the services of a one percent agent? I think that's what it was. Right, and so and, and while that may have some value in a conversation, why I would veer away from that is because now you're pitting that person against you, and you don't know what they're going to do. Because what what if I was that one percent agent, and, but I, and I was <clears> doing it as a favor for that person, and I and I'm going to deliver all the same services, and maybe Carlos has bought five properties with me, so I'm happy doing it at one percent, and he and I've earned. Three hundred thousand dollars for Carlos. So it from Carlos, rather. 
So it's, it's always be careful when you start to pit your services against another because you don't know what they're doing on the other side. Okay, Carlos is calling Janet. Or Carlos is not calling. Carlos is at the table with Janet. And the last okay. one, so Janet's going to be short and sweet, I'm sure. Um, sure. That's going to be a buyer, buyer console. Okay. Yeah. Hi, uh, Janet. Um, thank you again for having me here. Uh, other than um, all the uh, must five must have that we went through, are there anything else that you're looking for for your next home? Well, to be quite honest with you, um, you talked about professional fee and. Uh, I uh I'd like to steer away from having a pay professional fee. I hear you, uh, Janet. Other than uh, paying the professional fee, is there anything else that is uh, preventing us from moving forward and um, getting the disclosure signs today? That's that's exactly what it's about. Yes. Thank you, Janet. Uh, Janet, could you elaborate a little bit more? What is it about that that's making you? Um, think about or impeding you from moving forward? I want to be able to see every home and I don't mm -hmm. want to pay a professional fee. Okay? I hear you, Thank Janet. You. Janet, what I, what I think... Of, sorry, go ahead. Thank you. No problem. Janet, what I think I'm hearing is you would like to get something in return for nothing, right? It's almost like going to um to a service provider, for example, for dentist or doctor, and they're providing you providing you with a professional services and in return you're offering them nothing. I'm not I'm not sure you understand. We're, we're at the time. We're at the time, guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure, sure. Can you hear Matt, me? would you like to? Yes. Okay, just want to make sure because it was cutting out on my end. Um, so uh, what? It, that was that was kind of a, a tough one, but the reality of it is, what Janet's saying, she doesn't want to pay a professional fee or pay, pay a cobra. So um, I I would just I would I would ask her paint paint the picture for me. Because I I've handled this a thousand different ways, but just ask hey, paint this okay, paint the picture for me. So what I'm hearing is you want to look at all you want to look at all the properties and meet your wants and needs, but you don't but you don't want the broker you don't want the broker to come out of your pocket. Is that right? I know this is a big purchase. And I know that you have ways to add the professional fee into the price. Right. So have you, you ever bought care of that? Then right. we'll be have able you, to look at all the properties, right? Right, absolutely. Have you ever bought a home before? Yes. Right. And and when you bought that home, was a broker paid? Oh yeah. The seller paid the broker. Right. Okay. So the seller paid the broker. Right, right. But who brought the money? The buyer. The people you buying. were the buy you were the buyer, right? So you brought the money. Yep. So, yep. so who so so who paid the brokerage fee? Hey, you're confusing me. <laughs> Are we gonna look at uh, homes? Are we, we gonna look at without, absolutely? And you're gonna absolutely. add it in price, right? Sure. Okay, let's, so if let's, I, it's enough. If, let's do it. But great, there you go. I guess she has her answer right there, because then you just write sign it in the it. contract. Let's sign, let's go. But but the reality is that's that's kind of how I would handle it. Is is you you bought a home before? Who paid the fee? It's just smoke and mirrors. What side of the settlement statement it falls on? So at the end of the day, if I can secure a home at price terms and conditions that are weighted in your best interest, you're happy with what you pay, and and, and I get paid. Do we have any issues? Not at all. And she Let's said no. It. There you go. Please, well if what would have been the answer if she has never had bought a house before? So th then, then you just you just reverse it. You just say, well, when when you buy a home, and from 
from your understanding, who writes the check for the house? And so the you just ask that. Okay. Well, the, 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 the loan, the loan officer, the bank, the bank writes the check. Uh -huh. but, but you're the buyer. You're getting the mortgage. You bring the money, right? Okay. So, um, so really who, quick, yeah, go really ahead. Quick, in, in Canada, we don't pay. Uh, well, the buyer is paid by the seller. It's a total, it's a different um, commission structure. No, 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 it's no, it's no different. It's the same, it's the same, Carlos. What, what the, the parallel that I'm drawing, and we're, we're running out of time, but the parallel that I'm drawing is there's two sides to every settlement statement. There's a buyer side, there's a seller side. The brokerage right. fee in can the brokerage fee in Canada and in the US for the past 115 years, it's been deducted from the seller side. Right. But you're the buyer. You if you didn't write a check for the house, the house didn't sell. Where does the brokerage fee come from? It comes from the dollar amount you paid for the house. So really you, the buyer, are paying the commission. Make sense? It's just it's just smoke and mirrors as to where it's at on the settlement statement. So you right, wrote the right. check, you you wrote the check for a million dollars, and the seller from their side of the settlement statement paid thirty thousand dollars in broke in, in commission. So the buyer has always paid the commission. So then and and then that's when you go back and you say, so if I so if I can show you a way where you, you get a home that meets all your wants and needs, terms, conditions, price, et cetera. And at the end of it, I get paid what my brokerage charges for my services. Are you okay with that? Mm. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Speaking thank of thank you, tomorrow is Thanksgiving, and I would like to thank all of you for, for being uh, here. Happy Thanksgiving like to, to thank all my American cousins there. Yes, <laughs> yes. Matt, thank you, Matt. Matt, huge thank you to you Happy for holiday. for taking the time to share. Yeah, what you you're do. welcome, guys. I'm 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 grateful and, for all you guys. Thank you for uh, allowing me to be a part of your world. And Cindy, thank you for for tolerating us each and every day. <laughs> I don't know if she's there. <laughs> hey guys, um, they'll be back on Friday. I may or may not be here, but I hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving with your loved ones. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you.